Okay, let's talk about cynicism, a philosophical discipline that I actually don't know so much about. Uh, that's why let's just read it together. So most famous is probably Diogenes and I guess you have all heard the story already that when Alexander the Great came to see Diogenes, he asked him, what do you want? I'm Alexander the Great, I can fulfill any dream for you. And Diogenes just responded, well, you can start by getting the hell out of my son. <laughs> so, um, as I read further, it seems also that Diogenes is quite an asshole. Uh, the ancient Greek philosopher Diogenes was known for mocking people when watching a hopeless archer failing to hit his target. Diogenes went and sat by it, saying it was the safest place. Now, I don't feel all the anecdotes are so funny. Therefore, let's just go directly to Wikipedia and let's see what they say about cynicism. So, okay, cynicism is a school of thought of ancient Greek philosophy as practiced by the Kynics. And Kynics, as they say a little bit further below, is a Greek word. <laughs> and it stands for dogs because they are like dogs running around the streets and running around people. And so what I found quite interesting here was that they say that the purpose of life for a cynic is to live in virtue. So it kind of follows Aristotle's virtue ethics where the idea is that of course we pursue happiness but happiness is not necessarily tied to only wealth. That's Aristotle's position. Uh, wealth can be a part of it, is most of the time a part of it, but only wealth without having earned it by virtue is meaningless. However, here it is a bit different because we see here as reasoning creatures, people can gain happiness by rigorous training and by living in a way which is natural for themselves, which raises the question, what is natural? Rejecting all conventional desires for wealth, power and fame, and even floating conventions openly, flouting, I guess, flouting conventions openly and derisively in public. Instead, they were to lead a simple life free from all possessions. Yeah, so this is what a cynic seems to be about. And then we also see here a statue, a statue of an unknown cynic philosopher from the Capitol Museum in Rome. In Rome. Um, yeah, does that represent Purnus? Probably. So, and it says here, okay, it started in 400 BC and it was soon followed by Diogenes and then it was later revived also in ancient Rome. Okay, we don't need to look further into that, but which is maybe interesting is the question, where does the name come from, Dark Kynos? And it says here, one explanation offered in ancient times for why the cynics were called dogs was because the first cynic Antis, Antis, Antistenus taught in the Sinosarges Gymnasium at Athens. The word Sinosarges means the place of the white dog. It seems certain, however, that the word dog was also thrown at the first cynics as an insult for their shameless rejection of conventional manners and their decision to live on the streets. Diogenes, in part, was referred to as the dog. The distinction seems to have reveled in stating that other dogs bite their enemies. I bite my friends to save them. Later cynics also thought to turn the word to their advantage, as a later commentator explained. Now, before I come to this, why is he biting them to save them? I actually asked ChatGPT3, it couldn't give me an answer. It says, well, that's actually not really known, but here it is actually known. And I just looked on the Wikipedia page for Diogenes and it seems he stated that because dogs can actually distinguish better than humans 
who is who and they give an honest bark at the truth. And that is also something that we then can identify with Diogenes. So that's a good explanation. So let's also look for why they are also being called dogs. There are four reasons why the cynics are so named. First, because of the indifference of the way of life, for they make a cult of indifference and like dogs eat and make love in public, go barefoot and sleep in tubes and at crossroads. The second reason is that the dog is, shame, is a shameless animal and they make a cult of shamelessness, not as being beneath modesty, but as superior to it. The third reason is that the dog is a guard and they guard the tenets of their philosophy. The fourth reason is that the dog is a discriminating animal which can distinguish between its friends and enemies. So do they recognize as friends those who are suited to philosophy and receive them kindly, while those unfitted they drive away like dogs by barking at them. Okay, so this actually also gives us then an answer for why Diogenes bites at his friends. Okay, let's look at their philosophy, which according to the source can be summarized by eudaimonia and mental clarity or lucidity, literally freedom from smoke, which signified false belief, mindlessness, folly and conceit. Eudaimonia is achieved by living in accordance with nature as understood by human reason. Yeah, eudaimonia is good spirit. That what Aristotle calls happiness, right? Uh, then arrogance is caused by false judgment of value, which cause negative emotions, unnatural desires and vicious character. So I guess that should be avoided, right? And then it is about self-sufficiency. Uh, so we don't have any possessions, but only what we need for ourselves. So it then has also relation to certain ascetic practices. Um, which actually helps one to get rid of the influence of wealth, fame and power and so on and so forth. And last but not least, a cynic practices shamelessness and impudence and defaces the normals of society, the laws, customs and social conventions that people take for granted. What is normals is a habit or a custom, a social and political behavior that is socially constructed. Yeah. Thus a, core, uh, thus, a cynic has no property and rejects all convention, values of money, fame and power and reputation. A life lived according to nature requires only the bare necessities required for existence. And one can become freely by unshakingly oneself from any needs which are the result of convention. The cynics adopted Heracles as their hero as epitomizing the ideal cynic. Heracles was he who brought Cerberus, the Hound of Hades, from the underworld, a point of special appeal to the dark man Diogenes. According to Lucian, Cerberus and Cynic are surely related through the dark. Okay, so they like Hercules because he brought the dark from the underworld. Is that right? Well, why then didn't they uh, cherish Severus. Well, whatever. So, yeah, what I wonder here, however, is how did the modern notion of cynicism change so much? Let's ask ChatGPT. Yeah, once again, I think ChatGPT does not give good answers. So I'm always disappointed. Um, so here it just says, okay, cynicism is somebody who's very skeptical on has a negative attitude regarding the world. I don't think that is what skepticism nowadays is. Uh, sorry, skepticism, cynicism. I think cynicism is when you say something like the world is bad, so it doesn't matter whether I save water or not. The world is bad, therefore I can also be bad. Who cares? So I think that's cynicism, right? Um, yeah, ChatGPT, I mean, you can read the answer here. I feel like the answers that I ask it for in philosophy are never really satisfying. So anyway, let's, let's, uh, let's read it a little bit further here. Um, okay. 
Okay, so the cynic life uh, requires continuous training. Diogenes used to say that there were two kinds of exercise, that namely of the mind and that of the body, and that the later of these created in the mind such quick and agile impressions at the time of its performance. It's very much facilitated the practice of virtue, but that one was imperfect without the other since the health and vigor necessary for the practice of what is good depend equally on both mind and body. Yeah, so cynics, they don't retreat from society, right? They just try to live a more worthy life within society. Also, it's interesting that Diogenes seemed to be a cosmopolitan, a citizen of the world. The ideal cynic would evangelize as the watchdog of humanity. They thought it was their duty to hound people about the error of their ways. The example of the cynic's life would dig up and expose the pretensions which lay at the root of everyday conventions. So in a sense, Plato and Aristotle have not been true followers of Socrates because they founded an academia and had a very conventional life while Socrates was walking barefoot around marketplaces and was annoying people trying to push them towards a greater notion of truth possibly. So I think the cynics see themselves more in line with Aristotle, sorry, Aristotle, Socrates. Yeah. So, okay, history, um, yeah, the, we have already said a lot about the history of it, right? Therefore, I think we can finish here with a picture of Diogenes, uh, who's actually running around the market places with a lamp, certainly a picture that we know from Nietzsche. And well, I guess he's looking, yeah, for what is he looking, right? Uh, so it's like the light of the day, but I guess he says something that the society is still living in darkness. And again, I don't mean to appeal to any conspiracy theories by this, right? Also people question the government, right? <laughs> they still live in a certain kind of darkness. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a good night.